Good morning, Germany. Good morning, Joanne. <laughs> oh, we have a smaller group today. Yeah, some people just dropped out. Just today, um, we will be having Carnival Mardi Gras celebrations, but uh, 10 days from now, they're preparing some dancing exercises. Okay. Well, welcome, you guys. It's so exciting to have you here. I have uh, this book here. It's called Bridge to Terabithia. And this is a book that in America, we just about all of the kids end up reading this story. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing as we work together is to listen for certain details and to have the opportunity to talk about the book and to kind of practice some of your English skills. Sound good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in the beginning of a book, I don't know if this is typical of, of, of German books for you guys, does a book usually start off with the setting and the characters? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Could you start in German? In German books. Do books start with the characters or setting? Setting means uh, the ganze Umgebung, Ortsbeschreibung, also so. Not always. Not always. No, no, no. It's in the middle of the story and maybe you look back to the time. Back to the start. In the book, in the story, uh, in the book, you, um, sometimes you look back to start and yeah. in the start you not always uh, describe the character. Yeah. And that's to get you into the story. Sometimes it even starts with a conversation with people yeah. talking. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're gonna find that that happens with this book as well. And so I want you to listen for names of characters and details of the setting. Okay? So this is the first chapter. It's called Jesse Oliver Aarons Jr. Hmm. Already starts off with one of the names. <laughs> As the title of the chapter. Broom, 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 bripty, 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 bripty. Good. His dad had the pickup going. Do you call a truck that has a back part of it open a pickup truck? So that's exactly what they have in this story. He could get up now. Jess slid out of bed and into his overalls. He didn't worry about a shirt because once he began running, he would be hot as popping grease, even if the morning air was chill, or shoes because the bottoms of his feet were by now as tough as his worn-out sneakers. Where are you going, Jess? Maybelle lifted herself up sleepily from the double bed where she and Joyce Ann slept. Shh, he warned. The walls were thin. Mama would be mad as flies in a fruit jar if they woke her up at this time of day. He patted Maybelle's hair and yanked the twisted sheet up to her small chin. Just over the cow field, he whispered. Maybelle smiled and snuggled down under the sheet. Gonna run? Maybe. So, so far on this first page, we've already been introduced to some of the characters. Does anybody remember any of the characters' names? Um. Jo Joyce N. or something like this? Joyce Ann, yep. 
and another woman, but I don't know the name. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of names just in that first one. Uh, we've got Jess. That seems like almost like the... I'm going to take a guess that that's maybe the main character because the title is called Jesse Oliver Aarons Jr. And then all of a sudden we hear about this person named Jess. So I'm going to think that's probably the main character. We've got Maybelle, Joyce Ann, Mama. So I'm almost thinking that we might be in a family setting. That maybe this is a, a family, we're, maybe we're in a house. Do you guys agree? Yes. Yes. Which room in particular? Uh, the room of one of the kids. Okay. Possibly. The room of the main character. He's the, his, I would say his sister is jumping on his bed. Uh, oh, but we can agree on that room. Yeah. Of course he was going to run. He had gotten up early every day all summer to run. He figured if he worked at it, and Lord, had he worked, he could be the fastest runner in the fifth grade when school opened up. He had to be the fastest. Not one of the fastest, or next to the fastest, but the fastest, the very best. He tiptoed out of the house. The place was so rattly that it screeched whenever you put your foot down. But Jess had found that if you tiptoed, it gave only a low moan. And he could usually get outdoors without waking Mama or Ellie or Brenda or Joyce Ann. Maybelle was another matter. She was going on seven, and she worshipped him, which was okay sometimes. When you were the only boy smashed between four sisters, and the older two had despised you ever since you stopped letting them dress you up and wheel you around in their rusty old doll carriage, and the littlest one cried if you looked at her cross-eyed, it was nice to have somebody who worshipped you, even if it got unhandy sometimes. Sure. He began to trot across the yard. His breath was coming out in little puffs, cold for August. But it was early yet, by noontime, when his mom would have him out working. It would be hot enough. Miss Bessie stared at him sleepily as he climbed across the scrap heap, over the fence, and into the cow field. Mo, she said, looking for all the world like another Maybell with her big, brown, droopy eyes. Hey, Miss Bessie, Jess said soothingly, just go on back to sleep. Miss Bessie strolled over to a greenish patch. Most of the field was brown and dry and yanked up a mouthful. That's a girl. Just eat your breakfast. Don't pay no mind to me. So we've really gotten a pretty good picture of some of the setting. What are some of the details of the setting that you noticed? Uh, living in the New York field. Where, uh, which is really dry, dry. Uh-huh. And most of it is brown. Most of the field is brown. And there's a living uh, cow. Which Can you Miss, Miss Peggy or Miss Peggy or something like that? <laughs> yeah, and, and here we call that uh, probably a farm. That uh, we can <laughs> <laughs> there were cows and they were going moo. <laughs> You're laughing because you call it. A